the United Nations inter intergovernmental organization whose stated purposes are to maintain international peace and security. Every time you look up the UN, they're saying peace and security. Just like First Thessalonians chapter 5, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them. These things are not overnight. When we read about it, it's all in like one or two verses. But look, this started back in like the 40s. Look at Develop friendly relations among nations. Achieve international cooperation and serve as a center for harmonizing the actions of nations. It is the world's largest international organization. The UN headquartered in New York City. New, York's, New York is 666 in English Gematria. In the United States, but with certain extraterritorial privileges, and the organization has other offices in Geneva, Nairobi, Vienna, and The Hague, where the Inter International Court of Justice is headquartered. We all know that the UN map is a flat Earth map. When you look at it, let's see it. See the flat Earth, the feathers around it. The UN was established after World War II with the aim of preventing future world wars. Now look at. And they probably started World War II on purpose, you know. Hitler was probably an agent so that they can bring in uh, something new. That's how they do it. It's order out of chaos. So they create chaos to bring in order. And that's probably how World War II was started. With the aim of preventing future wor world wars and succeeded the League of Nations, which was characterized as ineffective, on 25 April... 1945, 50 nations met in San Francisco, California for a conference and started drafting the UN Charter, which was adopted on 25 June 1945. The Charter took effect on 24 October 1945. You know, it's interesting how all this stuff happened in 1945, which is the year that they dropped the atom bomb. Get it? Atom bomb. A T O M and A D A M. We're made of atoms. We come from atom, right? 1945. Now, if you go from 1945 to 2025, when I'm telling everybody the rapture is and the Antichrist shows up, it is 80 years. Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, the King James. The days of our years are three score years and ten. That's 70. A score is 20. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, that's 80 years. Yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off. And we fly away. There you go. 80 years from 1945 when the UN became the UN or whatever. It's 2025. When the UN began operations, the organization's objective as defined by its charter include maintaining international peace and security. There it is again. Protecting human rights, delivering humanitarian aid, promoting, you know, FEMA. Promoting sustainable development and upholding international law. At its founding, the UN had 51 member states. As of 2023, it has 193, almost all the world's sovereign states. They declared peace and safety, uh, according to prophecy, I believe, way back in 19, 1945 when the United Nations was made. And if you go 80 years, it is 2025. And we know that a generation is 70 to 80 years. As of Psalms chapter 90 verse 10. And just like I've been saying. And then at 80 years we fly away. Just like it says in the book of Psalms. Check this out. For example we learn in Exodus 7 7. That Moses is 80 years old. When he returns to Egypt to confront Pharaoh. See this is amazing because. Right it's 80 years from 1945 to 2025. That's the year of the rapture. That's the year of the Antichrist. And that is Romans chapter 11, verse 26, 2026. See, because Moses is a type and shadow of Jesus. So these things are all told to us in patterns and numbers. And then down here, Moses, that Moses is 120 years old when he dies. And that's amazing too, because Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, that God's spirit shall not strive with man forever for his day. years shall be 120 that's also showing us 120 jubilees. Jubilee is 50 years. 120 times 50 is 6,000 years from the fall of Adam to the return of Jesus Christ. Amazing patterns here. And then we see that Moses was 40 years old 
when he fled Egypt. For the first time, that's 40 Jubilees from Jesus Christ to 2025. This is amazing, guys. All these mysteries are in the ages and the numbers. All, all of it. It's all here. When did Isaac marry Rebecca? Since Isaac was 26 years old at the time and 40 when he married Rebecca, Genesis chapter 25, verse 20. Flip it around. That's 2025. You see that amazing pattern? And also 2520 is exactly seven Hebrew years, 360 days a year. And remember, 360 degrees is a full circle. That's what this is. It's a pattern. Isaac is a picture of Jesus, the son, and Rebecca is a picture of the body. And this is 360 degrees repeating itself over. It's amazing what the Bible shows. And also, this was in 2025 bc i can't find it in the in the i had i made a video about this before but this literally happened they were married in 2025 bc and the verse that says that he married her was 25 verse 20 that's crazy man these patterns it's a mirror it's a mirror image and this is ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 and ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15 uh, that things repeat themselves. And also Isaiah 46.10, that God declares the end from the beginning. This is how he does it in these stories. And he knew exactly how he was going to play everything out. 